Hello, praise the Lord, brethren, and praise Him indeed. Welcome to this, our Finding God episodes. We appreciate God, hallelujah, that we are still alive. Hallelujah, that you are the one that still listens, that still uh, says amen. And so we thank God for this yet another opportunity, uh, diving into this episode, Finding God. And as a person, I appreciate God for who I am. I also appreciate God for who you are. I also appreciate God for his word that we keep reading. And that is for our energizement. It is his word that encourages us. It is his word that gives us wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so um, there are passages that we keep reading through the word of God that informs our times that he informs our generations, that he brings meaning to what we think and what we do. Now, this time in our episode, as we continue with the Finding God, we're going to look at some of the unfamiliar passages, but of course, we have been looking at individuals, at persons that have been written about in the Word of God, and the people that were human like we are, but they did whatever they did to please God. And even those that didn't please God. But when we read about them, they are for our encouragement. When we read about them, they are for our information. And so that we get to know what God really desires in the life of a believer. And so we shall continue on this time with um, the journey that the Israelites were moving from Egypt, now heading to the promised land. And since it's the word of God, Every passage that we read has its own, you know, its own meaning and it adds on what we already know. And so that we can live our life that is pleasing to God, our life that is comfortable for other people, even in the society. And so that we can be a people that other people can be pleased with, that the personality that we develop that glorifies the name of the Lord. Now, the person, the event that we're talking about, is the event of a certain man in the Bible with his donkey, a donkey, a beast of burden. And this man is called Balaam. And he owned a donkey. But how he comes into picture is the journey story of the people of Israel as they were moving, heading to Canaan. And we get into the chapter 22 and in the book of Numbers. Now, it is one of the passages that when you read, there is something that actually that you begin feeling within you, that actually God does extraordinary things, things that actually speak about his presence and they inform our, you know, our lives so that actually can live a life that is pleasing to God. Now, Let's see Numbers chapter 22, which I just want to read a few verses. But the Bible says that then the people of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan at Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw, that, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was in great dread of the people because there were many. Moab was overcome with the fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, this horde will now lick up all that is around us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, at Pethor, which is near the river, in the land of the people of Amor, to come him, to call him, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt. They are cover the face of the earth. They are dwelling opposite me. Come now. Curse these people for me, since they are too many for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know 
that he whom you bless is blessed and he whom you curse is cursed now you see the story is come is unfolding the people of israel are moving they're on the journey and they're causing fear they are causing trouble for the people among whom they passed and this is the tribe of moab and the other people called the midianites and this is these are some of the stories that we don't usually read very very often but they inform our time and so in verse 8 this is what um balaam told the people that had come to call him he told them lodge here tonight i will bring back word to you as the lord speaks to me so the princess of moab stayed with balaam and god came and told balaam and said who are these men with you so god's presence was ever present god's presence was ever on the ready to intervene in situations concerning his people and so when you read this entire story from verses one and finish it at verse that, that verse 41 it tells about the story uh, how it unfolds but what brings me to share with you brethren that watch brethren that have desire for the word of god is actually to get something that we learn from this entire story this man balaam his donkey and so i analyzed the characters that are unfolding in the passage one are uh, the people of Israel because they're the ones that are causing this scene, this stage here for the king of Moab to get worried. So we have the Israelites, we have the king of Moab called Balak, and then we have um, these men whom they are calling to come and curse because they are mentioning that he whom you curse is cursed, who whom you bless is blessed. So they call him, come and curse them for us. Now, the other character that is very, very vital in the passage is the donkey the beast of burden that this man balaam was using and his two servants that he went with this is what the bible talks about and so the donkey the bible talks about it and so while balaam was on the way going after events had unfolded this is what happened the bible talks about the angel of the lord stood in the middle of the road and nobody else saw it apart from the donkey and beating it burning with the fury burning with the anger balaam was not seeing the donkey seeing the angel at all it's only the donkey and after he had beaten it this story tells us that the donkey spoke words spoke sense into the mind into the head of balaam and who gave the donkey ability to speak it was god can you imagine a beast of burden, your cow, possibly, your, 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 your goat or whatever you are using, and the animal speaks. And speaks what? Speaks sense to you. Actually, I mean, because we are higher, we are also animals, but we are higher animals, and so, and so it is. But here it is the donkey that speaks, and God appears to the donkey. So the angel of the Lord, in verse 23, uh, we read about him standing and the angel stops the donkey from passing and Balaam getting bruised on the side of the road. He beats it and he speaks it and the donkey said, am I, don't, am I not your donkey? But have I ever disobeyed you like this? Until the Lord revealed himself, opening the eyes of Balaam to see. And this is the entire story. And you read on. This chapter 22 of Numbers, you read on chapter 23, chapter 24, and see what follows about this man, Balaam. Now, friends, I just get overjoyed when I read passages like this because they speak to me personally. And before I come, before I share, they inform me, they speak to me, they encourage me, they speak a word to my heart, to my, to my heart. And so here, you realize, friend, that God does things in a fascinating way. God will always remain faithful to his promises. You see, he was remaining faithful to his promises. The people of Israel were not knowing whatever was happening. 
but here he things are falling behind the curtain whatever the devil was planning for them god was already in the know and whatever the soothsayer was going to say because of this man balam was when they want to cast a spell against these people he was a prophet he was the one who to cast whatever happens behind the curtain even if you don't know god knows this is a very very important point for me because the israelites on their way did not know what balak was planning whatever was happening the donkey talking they were not they were not aware but behind the curtains god working was working for their good and i praise the lord that even in our own lives there are certain things that actually god stops there god handles even us without knowing even us without noticing that it's happening but god answers on our behalf god deals with the situations on our behalf so friends i woke up with really this i thought that actually i should share that actually in our life there are certain situations that come even when i'm not aware god is handling god is dealing with it even if we are not aware there's something that god is dealing with behind the curtains and so i praise the god of heaven that actually he handles situations even when i don't know he handles enemies whom i don't know he handles whatever it is and so this is very very important he protected them whatever the circumstances he led them to safety even when they were rebellious even when they were disobedient but god is all with us he's omnipresent he's omniscient he knows everything and so he protects friends and so god was dealing in with the situations with balam with the with, with the donkey they didn't know but god was doing doing his work now one other pick that i get from this story chapter 22 of numbers that actually there is should it be any compromise at all with the things of god you see this king of moab balak wanted to divert you know the intentions that this man would come and curse the people that god had blessed and so it teaches us that never to compromise the things of god for material things and you know what amazes me is that actually balaam was sent money something that amazed me was the diviner's fee he sent balak sent him money to come and curse god is lord just read this portion of scripture you find actually he was sent money sometimes you know money is good but there is there are times when money can cause somebody to do a wrong thing you know go against god's will balaam was sent a diviner's fee and this we see um in um, in um, uh, in verse 7 the Bible said that so the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees of divination. Can you imagine? In their hand. And they came to Balaam and gave him, you know, Balak's message. And so you see there's many, many people that have been bribed to do wrong things against other people. For me, this is, and God fights the battles even when there are people that can bribe, that they, when, when there are people that can pay for your um you know if for, for 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 your uh, disadvantage someone can pay for your death can you imagine someone can pay for your curse someone can pay for your emotion someone can pay for your anything that hurts you but look god this divination fee even if it was sent no compromise and we read from this that Balaam refused to curse the lord is anointed he blessed them instead and when God blesses you, I get this very important message. When God has played, has blessed you, He has blessed you indeed. Now in Psalm, Psalms 105, verse 15, re echoes what happens in First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22. When the portion talks about, you know, David and King Saul and many, many things happen. So this word they say. Touch not my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Praise the Lord. That actually, God is anointed, touch not. And so, 
this story teaches me that actually behind the curtains God is working. That even when there are people that are, you know, processing many hurtful things, God cares about us. God, God, God cares about you. And so it is important for you and me to realize that our God will remain faithful. Many times it is us who cause, who run away from his favor, but he remain faithful indeed. So Balaam was offered this money, diviner's fee, but he never, at this moment in the time, he just said, what the Lord will tell me is what I will say. What the Lord will ask me to do is what I will do. Praise the Lord. That actually, he at this moment, he never went away from the righteousness of God for the money. Now, one other thing that actually you discover from this portion is that the anointed of God remains the anointed. God he defends them. They remain God's people. Even when they error. You see, when God has decided to bless someone, he blesses him despite the circumstances. You see, we deserve these blessings all the time. And when we suffer, it's because we have deviated. And suffering that we suffer, it is, it is discipline. Because the Bible talks about God he disciplines those that he loves. So when you are suffering and your God is anointed, it is because of deviation, of disobedience, of rebelliousness, rebelliousness that actually we all have to do all the time. And so the reason why, you see, God, you know, God is anointed. And because they remain, God is anointed. You see, in chapter 21, on the way, they disobeyed God. And God sent serpents, snakes, as a punishment, as a way of disciplining them. And so, and as much as we have, we call ourselves God is anointed, yes, which we are, and I praise God for that, deviation will lead to anything a way as a way of discipline. So God disciplines his people. And the reason why in this chapter 21, we read about him sending snakes, and the snakes beat everyone until they cried again to the Lord. Remember in the book of Judges, we we're talking about, you no know, people crying and then God relenting, God forgiving them. And so this is very important that actually they, they were bitten by snakes until Moses made a replica of this, a bronze snake and put it on a pole. And he said, whoever looks at the serpent with the pole will be healed. And indeed, those who obeyed the voice were healed. Those who did not obey actually died as a way of discipline. So God disciplines his own. But the anointed of God remains the anointed of God. No one can curse what God has blessed. God didn't allow the soothsayer, God didn't allow Balaam the prophet to curse them. God's blessing is permanent, is what I gather. God is, God's blessing is permanent. He doesn't take it back but he disciplines, as I've already said. So God does it with his blessings from us. But when we deviate, he disciplines by way of punishing. And so for the purpose of walking in the light of his love. And so you and I, friend, that God calls us, that God, um, you know, anoints us. God's favor rests upon us. We just need to walk in the way of the Lord. And the Israelites that focused their eyes on the Lord. God was enabled, well, God enabled them to succeed in everything that they did. And so Balaam's donkey teaches us here that actually we need to remain obedient to God's word. And also not a friend that God Almighty is a creator. He can use anything in his creation to fulfill his purposes. And this I've learned from day one, right from the time I got to understand the scriptures, God can use anything. And I always speak about it, maybe in several episodes, I must have spoken about them. But this God can use anything. He uses, in this story, he uses a donkey. In one of the scriptures, when the people shouted at the disciples who were shouting and singing, Hallelujah, Hosanna, when the people said that stop the disciples from singing, the people from singing, Jesus told them, if they keep quiet, the stones themselves will shout. And so I have, 
I have purpose in my life that the stones should not take my place. Now the donkey here took the place of talking sense into the head of Balaam. So God can employ any means to bring his sense to us. Because sometimes we get blinded by rage, by fury, by anger. Sometimes we shout, sometimes we quarrel. And of course, that is human indeed. But in the midst of that, God, we, are, we need to allow God to do his work. The donkey admonished Balaam. And we read also in Second Peter, quoted there, chapter 2, verse 15, about this donkey of Balaam making sense, talking sense into the life of Balaam. And so, friends, there's a scripture that informs me all the time, Romans 9, 15, following, following, that God uses whomever he chooses, and God chooses whoever he chooses. And this time he chose the donkey to speak the message, to speak sense into the life of this prophet Balaam. And so, friend, this story, that as, in as much as the Israelites were moving, there was trouble awaiting them through the one that would curse them. And all of us usually wake up in the morning. There are things that await us. There are troubles that keep lay, way lay us, waiting to catch us along the road, in our offices, wherever we go. And in knowingly, God will fight our battles. And knowing that God fights your battles as long as you have you a covenant child. I think we have spoken about being in covenant with God. If you're a covenant child, if you're a covenant person, God has sealed you with his uh, covenant. You remain his and he remains your father. And so he fights your battles even knowing that. And this has actually grounded even me, has grounded me even the more. To remain energetic, to remain actually, you know, vibrant in the service of the Lord. That I wake up in the morning, I say yes, and in own situations, and in own circumstances that may be against me, like the circumstance of Balak against the Israelites who were moving, but God was fighting for them behind the curtains. God continues fighting for us. So the Lord, our God, friends, is a God of impossibilities. God will find any way to reach to our hearts. You see, maybe if someone spoke to Balaam, he wouldn't get sense. But until the angel was standing before the donkey and until the donkey spoke, sometimes God will use circumstances around us to speak sense to us. So, so that we can be able to catch our attention, he would use any means. And God is a God of, our impo God of impossibilities. So God also uses anyone, me, you, anyone else, a child, adult, male, female, God uses. So that it is the way he used the donkey and uh, very, very important that actually we get to know there. Now may the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who started this good work through us and among us, fulfill his purposes for you. Like he fulfilled his purposes through the donkey. If we can use the donkey to speak, may he use you, may he use me to speak things that are sensible. You know, there are some people who live in life, but whatever, everything else that they speak, you rarely catch sense in their words. Maybe around us, at work, maybe wherever. But you find someone speaking, but you catch no sense at all. But here God uses an animal to catch, to speak sense. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, I just want to read this and you will catch it at some moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And I will close there. And the Bible says that um, God uses things of the earth, of the world, that have, that may seem, seem not to be making sense and to, I mean, to, I mean, to bring to nothing 
the wisdom of those that are so wise. So, First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty six, the Bible says, "For consider your calling, brethren. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. Not many of you were powerful. Not many of you were noble of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish, and this is what I was intending to say. What was foolish in the world to shame the wise." God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. So God chose what is despised in the world, even things that are not to bring nothing, things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. So there are certain things that happen, and God uses, brings these circumstances to teach us great lessons. So friends, may God speak to you and energize you that behind the curtains he will be working out a better plan for you a better plan for me and that we shall be on a journey in obedience to god's will and may god keep you and may god provide for you and may god protect you and may god use you in this generation may he continue doing his work and may his name be glorified like it was glorified during the time of balaam and his donkey in the name of jesus christ our lord amen and amen.